In today's video, we're talking about shooting tethered to a computer. Now, shooting tethered is one of those things where uh, photographers are, are a little bit divided over. You get people that are just dead against it. Um, and then you get other people like myself who use it all the time. For me, the benefits are just too great. Um, having a much bigger screen to check your work is just too valuable for me. So um, I shoot tethered wherever I can, uh, unless of course I'm doing a run and gun thing. So if I'm shooting an event, then obviously you can't do that. But if I'm shooting headshots or I'm shooting products, uh, I always uh, try to shoot tethered. The main benefit, of course, are, are well, the several benefits actually from having a bigger screen to check your work. Number one is focus. So on the back of, uh, on, the, on the screens on the back of your camera, sometimes it's easy to, for the camera to trick you uh, to think that you've got a shot in focus just because the, the screen is so small. So um, it's a lot easier to check your focus on a big laptop. You can zoom right into, if you're doing a portrait, you can zoom right into like say the eyelashes, which typically you can't do with uh, the screen on the back of, at least with the cans anyway, it'll let you zoom in, but there's a limitation of how far it will let you zoom in. So um, it is easier. And also you're still looking at a smaller screen. So anything on a smaller screen is going to look sharper um, and uh, potentially you may have missed focus and not realized. The second thing is, uh, I guess from a, from a whole image point of view, uh, for myself personally, it's easier to spot distractions or things uh, that are wrong with the image on a larger screen than on a smaller screen. So if, um, if for example, you've got some stray hairs uh, or you've got a necklace that's crooked, um, for myself, it's, uh, I notice those things a lot easier on the big, uh, screen than I do on the smaller screen. So that's another benefit for myself. Um, and, and that is a benefit for other people as well. So if you're working with a client, uh, for example, uh, you could be shooting away, you've got your camera tethered to your computer, and you could have two or three people looking at the image. So you could have the client, if you're working with hair and makeup, a stylist, they could also be looking at the image as well, and just checking that uh, their particular area of expertise, so for hair and makeup, they, they could be looking at that, the stylist could be looking at all the wardrobe um, things, just to make sure that everything's okay. So. Um, it's just better than uh, taking pictures and then showing the back of the camera to other people, which is, is not really that practical. Um, the, other, the other reason I use it as well is if I'm shooting products and, and I've set myself up like a little scene or, or a flat lay of some sort, then I typically will have the camera uh, mounted or permanently mounted onto something. Um, whether it be an, an overhead shot or, or on a tr simply on a tripod. And then I will have the camera tethered to the computer in live view. And then it just allows me to rearrange all the products while I'm looking, whilst I'm looking at the camera, at the, um, at the laptop. Um, and then I could just move things around and get the right, um, uh, the right framing and, and also the right layout of the items um, that is most pleasing. If you don't do that, you have to typically uh, take a shot, uh, look at the shot on the back of the camera, and then if you're not happy, move things around and then go back and take a shot and so forth. Again, not as efficient as having something that's live. It's uh, essentially video being transmitted to the computer and you can just move things around and get them right. So that is, those are the main uh, things that, or well, the reasons why I use um, uh, tethered shooting and I use it whenever I can. So there are a couple of things that you're going to need in order to shoot uh, tethered. Um, so here we go. The first thing is obviously you're gonna need some sort of laptop uh, or, uh, or a computer. You got your camera and the other thing you're gonna need is a cable. Now, when it comes to cables, um, I use the cables by a company called Tethered. Um, uh, t tethered, um, I forgot the name, yeah. Tether shoot. Uh, tether tools, big button, tether tools. Um, just had a mental blank there. And, um, and these cables are excellent. Now I own a few of these and uh, essentially what they are, they're just USB cables and I've got different combinations with, um, with different ends. So that is um, uh, USB-C and that connects to the, back, to the other camera, which is USB-3. And then I've got um, the older USB as well. 
Um, so I've got different, different connectors for different types of cameras and different types of laptops. So yeah, you're going to need something to connect your camera to the computer. The other thing you're going to need is software as well. And just before I move away from that, there are, other, there are um, wireless solutions that you can use, such as the, uh, the Cam Ranger as well. That's another one that is, uh, is quite good as well, but I'm not going to go through that today because that is wireless uh, shooting. Uh, this is not the only, uh, this is an older version as well. So I might do a video uh, in the future uh, regarding wireless uh, tethered, but for today I'm just going to talk about um, the actual wide itself, which I think is probably the, the most reliable way to shoot tethered. Um, so you've, you've got your computer, you've got your camera, you've got your cable. The next thing you're going to need is some software. And for software, um, there's really two main bits of software that, well, really three really, but uh, the most popular ones are going to, have to, are going to be Lightroom uh, by Adobe and then Capture One by Face One as well. And those are the main ones. The third one is going to be the software that, the OEM software, that's the software that came with your camera typically you are given some software that allows you to shoot tethered as well. Now, again, typically that doesn't give you um, as much uh, flexibility or features, uh, but you can shoot tethered and you can typically uh, connect your computer and control it uh, remotely as well. So, um, having said that, let's go through some of the, um, uh, some of the different uh, solutions that we have. First of all, we've got Lightroom. Now, Lightroom is, is the, uh, I guess, the, the the standard really when it comes to um, photography. That's the one that people know the most. And Lightroom is fantastic, and it allows you to shoot tethered, and also it saves an image to the camera and to the computer as well, which provides some redundancy uh, as well. So uh, Capture One doesn't do that. Capture One will only allow you to save the images to the computer because it uses a different system uh, to extract the, the uh, images from the camera. But with Lightroom, it's really easy to, to shoot a tethered, uh, a tethered session. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so now we're ready to start up the session uh, with Lightroom. Now, Lightroom can be a little bit temperamental when it comes to setting up, uh, hooking up your camera, um, at least with Canons anyway. So um, I've got a bit of a process that I use and it seems to work for me. So it might be just a little bit of experimenting for yourself, but otherwise you can try the, uh, what I do and see if that works for you. Um, so um, the first thing that I do is I start off with the camera off and uh, and uh, it's connected up to the to the computer here. So I will. The first thing I do is I launch the EOS utility, which is the uh, the utility that comes with the camera. Um, again, I got a 5D Mark IV, but I think um, as far as Canon is concerned, it uses the EOS utility for just about all their cameras. And now um, the camera is off, so you you'll get this screen here. But um, uh, this is where I turn on the camera. So when I turn on the camera, after a few seconds, it's going to detect the camera. And there it is, so it's come up in there, 5D Mark IV. Um, now I leave this running, and this is where I launch Lightroom. <clears throat> so Lightroom will fire up. And uh, I've got some sample images in there, but let's forget about those. Um, so at this point, and, and I should add, this is Lightroom Classic, and it's the version, um, the current version as of uh, the 18th of um, January 2020. So that is, uh, whatever that is, 9.1. So um, so to start off I, our session, we're going to click on File. We're going to go down to where it says Tethered Capture and then Start Tethered Capture. This is where I enter all the information regarding my shooting, uh, the, the session name, the file names, if I want to add it to a, location, uh, to a collection, the location of the files. Uh, metadata, and then down this down here, down the bottom, it says disable auto advance. You want to leave that off as well. That's just going to prevent the photos from progressing as you uh, or from viewing them as you as, as they come through. So at this point, I click OK. Um, you will see this new toolbar, this floating bar that appears down the bottom. That tells you now that you're within the, the you're in a, um, a tethered shooting session. Uh, but it comes up with this no camera detected. And at, this is at, at the time that I will then go and quit the EOS utility. So I quit here and you will see after a few seconds that over here, it's going to detect the camera and there it is, Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. So now we're ready to shoot. Um, I can set up, uh, I, can, I can actually alter any of the uh, settings in here. Um, 
uh, I can do them from here so I don't have to get to the camera. So if I've got the camera rigged up somewhere up on a, on a really tall stand or I've got it overhead and I can't get to it, I can change my settings from within here, which is really, really useful. Um, and also if I, if I change it on the camera, um, you will notice that it actually updates in there as well. So I can change aperture and um, the shutter speed and it updates up on the screen. So at this point, I could actually take a photo. Now I've got my, it's obviously just on my table here, but I can actually uh, fire off from here. This is just a shutter button as well. So if I click on that, it will actually fire off a, uh, a photograph. And uh, yeah, from there I can actually, if I think that that's too, uh, too dark, I can go in and lighten it up by increasing the shutter period. Um, or I can darken it up as well. So back to darken there. So you'll see the images that are coming up in here and they're just popping in there. Uh, I can change things like, you know, the ISO, that's gonna make it a little bit darker as well. Um, and I can do something ridiculous like 3200 and it'll be nice and bright. So that is shooting uh, with Lightroom. And uh, so now let's move on to uh, Capture One. Okay, so now we're gonna go into Capture One and we're gonna set up a, set, a tethered session using Capture One. Again, I'm using the latest version as of uh, January uh, 18th, 2020. Um, and the uh, product is called Capture One 20. So uh, I'm gonna launch that now and uh, I've got that in there. This one's a lot easier to, I think it's a lot, a lot friendlier to use than, the, uh, than Lightroom. I've got my camera, it's switched on. Um, and as I, sh as I fire off the, or as I launch the application, you'll notice that immediately it just launches into the previous session that I had. Um, and you can see the camera information come up in there, um, which is really, really nice and tidy. And it, it's, it's, it's just presented, I think, in a, in a, better, in a better format. Uh, I can change any of these in, in here as well. So I can go and select any of these things in here. Um, the ISO, um, I've got the big, uh, fire button as well so that when I click that button it takes an image and it automatically loads it up in there for me to view it um, and uh, I've got my live view in here now this is very useful when you're doing things like flat lays or you, you've got um, a, a, a product set up or you've got the camera set up somewhere where it's not accessible if you click this button it goes into live view mode and at this point now you can go in there and rearrange your products if you want to and uh, and you go yeah that looks really good rather than have to, having to go in and take a photo every single time and um, uh, and then check in the back of the camera. So this is uh, this is very useful as well. So uh, that is live view, and you just get a whole bunch of other things in here that you can control from the camera itself. Um, you've got all sorts of things down here, and it just to me it's it it just it seems a lot more powerful than Lightroom. The other thing that's good about uh, um, uh, Capture One as well is the fact that you can create presets, if you like, like filters that can be applied to the photograph as you're capturing them as well. So it will save the raw file, but it will also preview the file with a preset. Now that's really important if you're shooting, for example, in a flat profile to capture a well-exposed image, but you've got an art director sitting next to you and they're trying to see what the image would look like once you've done some of the post-processing. So this is uh, Capture One. Again, it's probably my go-to um, solution when it comes to tethering. Now, one of the things that you need to remember with Capture One is that whilst you are taking the photographs on your camera, uh, even if you have a, um, um, a memory card on the camera, it's not going to save the photos to the camera itself. It only records them to the, the computer. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Um, that you will only have that one place where the files are going to be located. So um, yeah, just something to keep in mind, but I, th I still think that this is probably the best uh, tethered solution out there. Okay, so the final option that I wanna cover off is using the uh, OEM software. That is the software that comes with your camera. Now, in my case, um, I'm using the Canon software. That is the Canon EOS utility. 
uh, that is shipped with every EOS camera. So it's going to look a little bit different, or it's gonna look very different to, to you if you're using a different brand. But if you're using a Canon, I just wanna show you uh, what that looks like. So we're going to uh, launch the application and how we do this, uh, we just turn on the camera and we plug it, make sure that it's all plugged in, we turn it on, uh, the utility is going to detect the, um, the, the camera and it's gonna fire up the application. And the option that you're after is the remote shooting application. So when you do that, it's gonna bring up a little panel uh, with a whole bunch of really useful information. Um, and again, from here, you can actually go in there and change some things. So if you wanna change the, the aperture, for example, and uh, it's very, uh, I mean, it, it's very functional and it, it looks really well presented to me anyway, but um, the only thing that this lacks is, I mean, you've got the fire button in there and I'll show you what that looks like. So when you, um, when you click on the button, again, there we go. Uh, I'll just move the camera to shoot at a different frame. Now I will fire up the, uh, the shutter again and it will show you the, uh, the photo. Now, the thing that this doesn't do is it, it doesn't seem to uh, be able to show you all the images. So it's hard to navigate um, uh, to see, you know, three, four images a go. So that's what makes it a little bit difficult, but if you are just looking at the, um, at the last image, then this solution itself could work really well for you. So if you're doing product photography, you, again, you can, uh, you can play around with the different, um, the different uh, setups and um, you, can, uh, you can fire off some shots and look at them on, on the big screen and it just makes things a little bit easier. So not as much flexibility as you get with Lightroom and Capture One, but you still get a whole bunch of stuff in here that you don't have to pay for. So um, it is an option. I don't use this very often because I like to be able to, uh, once I fire off 20, 30 shots, go back and show them to my clients. Um, and this makes it difficult to do that. But um, nonetheless, it is an option that could come in handy uh, in some instances. Okay, so that is how I shoot tethered using my camera and my laptop. If you want to know more about any of the stuff that I've talked about today, uh, so things like the little jerk stoppers, uh, the cables, or any of the software that I've shown you, just have a look at the description below. Uh, in the notes, there is uh, links in there that will take you to all the pages uh, where you can read up uh, more about any of that stuff. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.